And we're back with the chat with chapter five of the Arborist Exam Prep class, Tree Nutrition and Fertilization. Let's go. Let's just jump right into it. Plant nutrients. Plants need specific nutrients to function and grow. A nutrient is an essential element involved in tree metabolism or necessary for completing the life cycle. Trees get nutrients from weathering and minerals in the soil. The decomposition of organic matter and atmospheric deposition like rainfall and even dust particles. Urban soils are often altered and don't contain sufficient amounts of essential elements. This can limit tree health and growth. On top of that, when we rake leaves and dispose of organic mat material, we interrupt the natural nutrient cycling process. In these cases, fertilization may be necessary to supply additional nutrients. Fertilizing can increase growth, improve flowering and fruiting, and slow the decline in health from nutrient deficiencies. However, moderation is key. If fertilization is not needed or applied correctly, it can harm the tree. Uh, fertilizer misuse can increase susceptibility to pests and accelerate tree decline. Nitrogen, for example, can cause a tree to divert energy to growth rather than defense. The ISA Best Management Practices for Tree and Shrub Fertilization offers detailed guidelines for fertilization. The plan should define objectives, application rate, timing, method, and location. So trees require 16 to 19 essential elements, while well, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen make up 90% of the tree's mass. The rest of the elements are absorbed from the soil and make up uh, less than 10%. So in the natural environment, as the tree ages, they reuse the elements taken up in previous years. So leaf litter falls, it's broken down, it's taken up. And uh, each, each essential element taken up plays a unique, re irreplaceable role. Trees require macronutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in large quantities. So macro, large. Secondary macronutrients include like sulfur, magnesium, and calcium. The tree needs these in moderate quantities. Nutrient deficiencies can harm a tree's ability to function properly. Unchecked deficiencies stress trees, leaving them vulnerable to other issues. One example is nitrogen deficiency. Symptoms of this include reduced growth, small leaf size, and leaf chlorosis, which is yellowing of the leaves. So we talked about macronutrients and secondary macronutrients. Now we're going to get to micronutrients. And these, these are just as important. They're all very much needed for the tree, but they're just needed in much less quantity. And in fact, you, you definitely want to, don't want to overdo it on these. Um, their deficiency can limit growth and harm just as much as the macros. And the distinction between nutrient limitation versus deficiency is a nutrient to, uh, limitation slows the growth, while deficiency actually affects overall tree health. Fertilization should be based on the tree's health objectives. The need for supplemental nutrients and analysis results to determine the appropriate fertilizer. A soil analysis helps estimate available nutrients, organic matter content, pH, and cation exchange capacity, CEC. And a review on cation exchange capacity. See, we circle back to these terms. We go through them fast, but we always come back. CEC measures the soil's ability to hold and release essential nutrients. Clay and organic matter increases CEC, while sandy soils tend to have low CEC. And soil pH affects nutrient availability. For example, iron is more available when pH is less than 7, but virtually unavailable when pH is above 7. Foliar analysis measures nutrient content in the leaves. This helps assess how well trees acquire or use the soil nutrients. Combining soil and foliar analysis provides a more complete picture. A complete fertilizer contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. For example, a fertilizer labeled 10 to 4 is going to be 10% nitrogen, 2% phosphorus, and 4% potassium. And the fertilizer ratio is just the ratio uh, calculated by dividing each percentage by the smallest number in the group. So 933 fertilizer has a 3-1-1 ratio. 
So we have organic and inorganic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers are carbon-based and may be either synthetic or natural. Um, organic fertilizers provide a carbon source for soil organisms. And an advantage to them is they're not leached as readily from the soil. And inorganic are mineral-based and they release the nutrients quickly in water. Controlled release nitrogen is preferred because uh, they provide nutrients over a long period and it reduces leaching and the risk of fertilizer burn. The percentage of water insoluble nitrogen, WIN, on the label will determine whether it's slow release or not. For phosphorus and potassium, use a soil and foliar analysis to guide you on application rates. Excess phosphorus can cause environmental problems like eutrophication of ponds and streams and reduce new, uh, root nutrient uptake. And we talked about secondary macronutrients. Um, they can be deficient as well. This is the sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. Uh, sulfur deficiency is more of often found in crops than in trees in the landscape. Growth in sandy soil and low pH. Soil may be limited by calcium and magnesium. If calcium is low, add calcitic limestone. All right, micronutrient deficiencies. Although they're not required in large amounts, deficiencies can have severe impacts on tree health. Tree species require different amounts of micronutrients. They're not all the same. Iron chlorosis is common in high pH. You'll see it in pen oaks. Leaves will be small and they'll be chlorotic between the leaf veins. Older leaves will be darker than the new leaves. And manganese and zinc are often deficient and their symptoms are similar to iron deficiency. Micronutrients can be applied to the foliage, soil, or even injected straight into the xylem. Fertilizer should be chosen with soil pH in mind. If soil is slightly alkaline, acidic fertilizer will be much more effective. A chelated form can help with nutrient availability in alkaline soils. Fertilizer rates should be based on tree health objectives and soil and foliar analysis. Consider species, weather, and other factors. Slow release should be no more than 3 to 6 pounds per 1,000 square feet. And a quick release nitrogen, they should be, you should use no more than 1 to 2 pounds per 1,000 square feet. All right, well, let's just wrap it up with a few application techniques. So first we have surface application, and this is when fertilizer is applied over the soil surface with the spreader or a sprayer. The area may need thorough watering, after, uh, after using this application. The advantages to this are easy, low cost, and quick. The disadvantages are non-target impact, runoff risk, and competition with turf. Then we have subsurface application. This is fertilizer placed just below the turf grass roots. This is trying to avoid the competition with the, sur with the turf grass. Uh, we also have Drill hole fertilization. Oh, that's part of subsurface would be drill hole fertilization. And that's putting granular fertilization placed in holes drilled in the root zone. And liquid injection is fertilizer injected into soil. And foliar application, this is just short term. Uh, you're just spraying micronutrients on the foliage. It greens it up and is most effective before active growth periods. And use some caution. It's not. It's not uh, ideal for thick cuticle species, and it also can cause staining on hardscapes and other uh, surfaces nearby. Implants injections, they're just introducing micronutrients directly into the xylem. Um, this is best when the tree's actively transpiring, and you want to avoid using it on drought-stressed trees or more than once a year. All right, we got through it. Thanks again for watching and please like and subscribe and let's get on to the next one.